Hey guys, it's Banker. And Watts. Welcome to Key Signatures. Woo! All right, we're here to talk with you guys about a very important subject, key signatures, that I know a lot of you don't quite understand. So Watts and I made this beautiful PowerPoint that we're going to share with you. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about it. Maybe. Okay, so here's our beautiful PowerPoint presentation about key signatures. I'm sure a lot of you still don't really understand them. Watts, do you really understand key signatures? Eh, you know, give or take. Meh, you know. So, what is a key signature? A key signature is a uh, symbol that appears at the beginning of a piece, always after the clef, um, that tells us which notes are sharp, flat, or natural. And I'm sorry, cellos and violas and bass, we did pick a treble clef option here. Sorry about you. Watts, do you have anything to add? Well, the next slide's gonna cover it, but you might be wondering, what, does it matter where each of these sharps or flats or naturals are placed? You also might be wondering, what about the other notes that don't have any symbols next to them? We will cover that. Excellent. Okay, so I know you're all wondering, why do we need key signatures? Did you know that every piece that we play is based on a scale? It's not like the composer was just like, eh, whatever, I'm just gonna write these notes. Each piece is based on an actual scale. And a scale serves as a toolbox for your piece. And I want you to imagine all of the notes sitting inside of the box and you can take them out in any order. And that's really important. When you're making a piece, the notes can be in any order. You can add different octaves of the notes. You can um, add 13 of the same note in a row. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just the specific notes that are inside the toolbox make up the piece. Does that make sense, Wallace? That makes total sense to me because you just pick a new toolbox for each key. So if we're in D major, you have the D major toolbox. If we're in A major, you have the A major toolbox. Speaking of D major, Ooh. let's talk about D major. So D major is our favorite key, throwing it back to fourth grade. Ooh. It's the first one we ever learned. And when you learned um, the D major scale in fourth grade, you didn't learn really about this part right here. Um, you learned that your F is sharp and your C is sharp, but you never really learned like what the key signature is because the sharp was next to the note. Um, but did you know that when the sharps are placed on the staff, they're placed to the corresponding note name? So this is F sharp and this is C sharp, or if you're a viola, F sharp, C sharp, or a cello, F sharp, C sharp. Now, it's not really fair for the violins because this F sharp is a note that we don't really learn until seventh grade or the end of sixth grade. So it's kind of confusing because you're used to playing F sharp right here. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So next okay. slide. Do you remember the notes of your D major scale? <gasps> what do you remember? Think about them. Love it. What notes are you playing? I'm playing D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Love it. So on the next slide, I put all of our notes inside a toolbox here. And if I was better at technology, I could get these to move around. They were supposed to be able to move. Uh, but I'm still <laughs> learning very slowly. Soon. Um, so I just put all the notes in there and they could be in any order. I put them in, in kind of order if you think D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. And those are the notes of our D major scale. So if we're going to play a piece that's in D major, we can have any of those notes as many times as we want in any order. We just know that those are the notes that we picked from because D major is based on the D major scale. And we could have, uh, for example, if you're a cello, we could have D that's one on the C string, 
I've got my five string here so I could show that if this is a viola. We could have this D or this D or this D or this D. We have all the Ds. It doesn't matter. That's just the ones that we pick from. Um, and so they sit inside the toolbox. You take them out to make a song. Okay. So this is the question that I get a lot. All right. I understand. But why? Like, why is it that combination of notes? So you have to remember that each key signature is based on a scale. So what's, what's a scale? Hmm. A scale is notes that appear in order and follow a key signature. There's usually eight notes. What? So, um, and the, the notes are usually in ascending and descending order. And so now we know that each key signature is based on a scale. The scale is the pitches in order, ascending and descending. But that still doesn't explain why we picked those specific notes. It doesn't explain why the F is sharp and why the C is sharp, and I'm still confused. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready for the next slide? Yes. Okay. So, it's all about the layout. Many, many moons ago, somebody way smarter than me uh, decided if we arranged the notes in our toolbox in a specific order, it would sound awesome, and boom, scales were born. Ta-da! In orchestra, we learned major scales first. And we learned, we started with D major. Doesn't it bring back the memories? <laughs> um, and major scales are compromised of half, actually all scales are compromised of half steps and whole steps. But they're um, specific to the type of scale. So a half step is notes that are right next to each other. And Watts, do you want to demonstrate that? What notes are you playing? I was playing B to C. C natural? B natural. That's a half step. However, in the D major scale, here is what a half step might sound like in D major. What notes are you playing? That is F sharp. To G. F sharp to yeah, G. D major scale. So half steps are notes that are right next to each other, but whole steps are notes that have a space in between them. Uh, can you give us an example of that? You're playing D to E, right? Yep. Can you give me an example that doesn't start on an open string? Good, you're playing E to F sharp, right? That's one to high two. Do you see there's a space in the middle here? Um, that means we could fit a half step in there. So if I had one to low two, that'd be a half step. And low two to high two would be a half step. So you put them together, boom, math, and you get a whole step. Ah! Okay. So here's the order of the major scale. Here's the layout. Uh, the first note the distance, when we're talking the distance between them, from the first note to the second note, from D to E is a whole step. E to F sharp is a whole step. F sharp to G is a half step. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C sharp is a whole step. And C sharp to D is a half step. Yay! I think we might have forgot one in there, but y'all get the idea. So if you're still confused, here's a different way to look at that layout. This is the D major scale according to, just kidding, according to a piano. And so I have the notes D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. So if you can see, there's no space in between there. And then there's a key in between here and a, from here to here. So this makes a whole step. I'm sorry, there is a space in between here. D, D sharp, E. Sorry, there's a space here. There's a space there. But between F sharp and G, there is not a space. There's a space there, a space there, a space there, but no space there. 
And that's why we have the specific notes in our key signature that we do. Because somebody decided that's going to sound great, and it does. So key signatures are based on the scales, which are based on a very specific layout of half steps and whole steps. Now you know. Yeah. Woo! Okay. I think I got it. D major has the notes D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D because this is the layout of half steps and whole steps. Go ahead and take a minute to read that. Let that process in your brain. And I realized I forgot to color this one green. That, oh, no. And that should be, that should say whole step, not half step. Oh, well. <laughs> So remember, this should say whole step right here. Banker. All right, let's review. A key signature is a symbol that appears at the beginning of the piece, which tells which notes are sharp, flat, and natural. And remember, we haven't really talked about the natural notes. Um, we don't put the natural signs in the key signature because we don't need them. They're natural. We, we know that all notes are natural until they have a sharp next to them or a flat. Um, the sharps and flats represent the specific note name that is sharp or flat. They're not placed on the key signature randomly. Um, each piece we play is based on a specific scale, and scales are made up of half steps and whole steps, and that's what, what makes music sound awesome. And the layout of a major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's a common question. If I'm in the key of D major and every single F is sharp and every single C is sharp, no matter where I play them, why are there only two notes marked in the key signature? Um, Watts, you want to explain a little bit about that one? Huh. Well, if imagine that we had a sharp next to every F sharp possible on your staff. That would look really messy. It'd be really, cr really crowded and it'd be kind of confusing. So what we do is we just choose one F to put the sharp in for our and then that becomes the rule for all. So that way, if there's two sharps in D major, F sharp and C sharp, you're going to see only two sharps in the key signature. So it's clean, it's easy to read once you understand what it means. Awesome. And so that's why it's really, 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 like 20 times really important that you learn your note names instead of the finger numbers uh, because that way you can look at your key signature and think oh yeah all my f's are sharp um it's a better way to effectively use your key signature sorry about you <laughs> all right so let's go through and identify each one of these key signatures um this is a key signature the first one that has zero sharps and zero flats. So I'm going to give you about five seconds. What's that wasn't five seconds. Hold on. <laughs> okay. What's do you know that key signature? I do. The key signature with no sharps and no flats is C major. Awesome. We're going to skip to this one right now. And this one has one sharp. And the name of this sharp is F sharp. So a cool trick you can use when you're doing um, uh, sharp key signatures is you can take the, the sharp and you can just go one half step up and you got the key. So I know if this is F sharp, I want to go one step up. Boom. G major. And this one. If I have the last sharp, you have to do it with the last sharp. I take the last sharp and I go one half step up. That last sharp is a G sharp. So what's one half step up from G sharp? A major. A major. Awesome. And you can do a, a similar trick with the flats. 
Um, but we have to start with this one because this one you just have to memorize. I'm going to tell you right now, this key signature is F major, F major. Um, but if I go over here to this last one, I can take the second to the last flat, meaning the first flat in this case, and that's actually the name of the key signature. So B flat has two flats because I know that note is B flat. That's kind of a cool one. Watts, do you have any other tricks or are those kind of the two tricks that you know? Hmm. My other trick, besides just memorizing it because we are old and have figured it out by now, is all, if you put them in order, they're all, um, names are all five notes apart. And okay. that might transition us into the next slide. Okay, I like where you're uh -huh. going. Uh-huh. Like it. Boom. Okay. There's this thing, yes. we have a poster of it in our classroom and it's called the circle of fifths. Now, I didn't um, include the clefs in here because I, we all have different clefs and I didn't want it to get messy. So the coolest thing about the circle of fifths is that it's a complete circle. So if you start in C major and you go up five notes, you get G. That's also like our strings. What? And if you start on G major and you go up five notes, you get D. And if you go up five notes from D, you get A, and so on and so on and so on and so on until you get all the way around the circle, which is really kind of cool. And if you go this way around the circle and you go four notes um, up, you can go five notes down or you can go four notes up, and you can go around the circle this way too, which is really, really cool. Um, I also think it's really cool that if you think about your sharps, F sharp, if you go up five notes from F sharp, you get C sharp. And if you go five notes up from C sharp, you get G sharp. And if you, get you, if you go five notes up from G sharp, you get D sharp. Do you understand how that's going around the circle too? I think that's crazy and really, really awesome. Um, the circle of fifths is something that we don't get enough time to talk about. And if it's completely confusing you right now and you're like, ah, don't worry about it. Uh, I just, we wanted to show it to you because it's a really, really cool tool. Yeah. Woo. Anything else, Watts? Well, I like to think it's cool to know all this information and it's really cool to figure out that, oh my goodness, all of our pieces are rooted in a scale. So all the notes in this piece, you know, if you know that scale. Um, however, sometimes you just want to be able to look at the key signature and know if you're supposed to play a high two or a third finger instead of a two. And this is a really big deal as well. So if you know your key signature and you know your scale, then you know if you're supposed to play a high two or not, or a three instead of a two. And that has to do with knowing your, your note names versus your finger numbers. Mm-hmm. Because um, if, you, if you look at your note and you see, okay, I know that's a two, um, you'll know it's a high two or a low two if you know what name it is. Because if you look and you say, instead of that's a two, oh, that's an F sharp, you know it's a high two. Or if you look at it and you think, oh, that's an F natural, there's no sharp next to it. Oh, I know it's a low two. Um, so really knowing your, your note names is, is more important to understanding key signatures than just about anything else. But do you have a specific question? Um, if you do, make sure to answer the last question on the Google form that we attached this video to. Um, and Watson and I will make a follow-up video answering all your questions. And we won't name you in the video, so we don't worry, it's anonymous, um, because your question might be somebody else's question. And we really want to make a follow-up to this to make sure that you guys are understanding how key signatures work. Um, because we usually don't have, you know how we always say, we don't have enough time, we don't have enough time. Well, we have all the time now uh, to make more videos and really let you understand anything that you have questions about. Yeah. All right. Now we're back. I think we're ready to wrap this thing up. 
I think so too, banker. All right, y'all have a great day. Please enjoy our video and don't forget to fill out your Google form. <laughs> Bye. Bye everyone.